I'm Diane Simitz, and I am one of the owners of Launch Agency. And I'm Scott Hess, I'm with Spark Foundry. So your fight tonight is about whether or not the agency should keep creative separate from media or not. What is your take? I definitely think that they need to be together. They're, they are both very important functions that contribute to the big idea. And you? Of course, I disagree with her completely. I think it's great uh, to have this, the agencies uh, separate and working together. All right, here we go. Diane, 45 seconds. Okay, first of all, I want you to know that to prepare for tonight, I spent the last seven years fighting with my husband, so I, I'm right. <laughs> now, um, so when did media become unbundled? Like, when did we stop being lovers, Scott, and start being fighters? Well, you can actually track it back to the early 1980s, and there was a super crappy economy, of course, when I started in the business. And clients were having to slash budgets, and in comes writing this, these new media buying services run by people who looked suspiciously like the people who used to work down the hall from us, and they were bringing clients the kind of discounts they need with their leveraging their buying power. So they gained, but we lost. We lost this essential collaboration that is the creamy center of big ideas. And, and, and I can say I don't think that there's any, um, any discount for TRPs more valuable than working together. All right. If you can't tell whether she's a media buyer or a creative first, uh, let the evidence suggest. I gave her 24 extra seconds, but I'm not going to give you 24 extra seconds. You got 45 <laughs> seconds, Scott. All right, so first of all, I love hanging out with creative agency folks. You guys listen to the coolest music, and you're great at drinking. Thank you. That said, when it comes time to plan and buy media, I want to go with a specialist. I want to go with a media agency. Um, by the same token, I would rather have a beer with a plumber than with a heart surgeon. When it's the angioplasty time, though, I'm going with the specialist. Media agencies today are highly specialized, but we're doing a heart surgery on plumbing budgets, and that's because we have scale, and Diane does not. Now, she's going to tell you it's all great to have everybody under one roof. That's a recipe for great work. It's not. It's a recipe for harmony and agreement, and that ain't where creativity comes from. Creativity comes from complementary differences rubbing together. It's not two sticks in the dark like she has. It's flint and steel. That's how you make a fire. All right, all right. The gloves are off. Have a seat. That's what Diane, I got for being yours, nice. Right? All right, feel free, feel free. Take the gloves off. Well, essential to creativity is collaboration. And we're all good, but we're always better together, Scott. And I feel a little bit hurt by that. I gave you an, an, an hour and 45 seconds of compliments, and that's what you have. So I agree we're better together. The creative agency and the media agency working together. That's what we do every day with all of our clients. Taco Bell, we work with Deutsche LA, and they're awesome. But here's the deal. I'm not the only person on the stage that thinks we ought to be separate. In 2017, in the online Q&A, Diane said what agencies, what clients should look for in an agency is subject matter expertise. And ain't nowhere in her bio says she's an expert in media. OK. Okay, we haven't even gotten to the questions yet. Is there any fact checking? Fact checking on that? Yeah, I feel really bad. I feel like I should cut somebody. Okay. Now, Avocados de Mexico has bought a, a, a media dollar or two in the last few weeks. Yvonne, you have the first question. Yeah, one thing I forgot to mention when I introduced myself is that I have been, before going to the client side, I have been in some great agencies here in Dallas, including Timberly McLean, the Richards Group, then Lerma. And so I, the, I could say that the only thing I love um, advertising agency life, the only bad thing is the clients. So that's where I left. But um, so, I, so I know how, how 
the, the drill inside, what is going on there. So um, <laughs> we know that creative teams and media teams have sometimes conflicting interests, goals, passions, drives. So, and we know also that within agencies, there's some personalities that are more dominant than others. So how you manage to avoid that, or, or how you, you, you um, avoid that your creative strategy or your media strategy get compromised, sometimes it's media driving, sometimes it's creative driving, right? How you compromise the authenticity of that strategy when one of those groups is dominating making the decisions? Well, I, Diane I, nodded, I, I, I can tell she wants to answer that first. <laughs> oh, are you hearing? Okay. I actually think that's the whole point, is uh, you lose when we don't work together. And, and, we, and as an agency, we try very hard to break down the walls between us if we're in separate places. And we also recognize that it's great to be with everybody who agrees, agrees with everything we say. When we're with creative people, we love that. But we also recognize that the friction and the diversity um, an inclusion of a lot of other thinking brings you value. You know, John Boiler said it's messy, but it's really important. So we, we actually work very hard to let everybody have a seat at the table and contribute their gifts to the process. Scott? So I agree with Diane that we have to work together. Um, Spark Foundry was actually called Starlink when we started in 2001. We were created to be the media arm to boutique creative firms because all these little tiny agencies were winning great big pieces of business. They didn't know how to do media. So we're, collaboration is in our DNA. We actually have non-publicist creative agencies now that will say you should get Spark to do your media because they work so well with creative agencies. Like I opened, I love working with creative agency folks. They're the best. Which is the best case for integration, I will just say. Okay. Who else has a question? I've got one. Rebecca does. My question is actually specifically for Diane. Uh -oh. Scott's going to have to answer it, though, too. <laughs> oh, well, that's cool. But first, Diane. Um, <laughs> so I get the idea of collaboration and inclusion, but how do you make sure that uh, your internal folks stay fr have fresh thinking and are coming up you know, with new ideas if they're kind of working on the same brand day in and day out? Well, we, we actually, we work on all different kinds of brands, you know, sort of the ultimate ADD experience. But I think that, that our clients also have synergies and what we learn on one we can, we can adapt and bring to others. Um, so it's a, it's a cumulative process. Um, and, and, and actually, we like to keep it fresh. Uh, that way you don't get stale. You know, it's easy to get burned out in this business. It's very hard working under a lot of pressure. So we, we try to keep it fun and interesting. We ha I have some folks out there, they, I hope they, they agree with that. <laughs> but that's a very important. You, know, you always want a, a, a fresh brain on your business. Scott? It's really hard for creative agency to get fresh media ideas. What happens, the person at, at launch that was their founding media guy is now in charge of account services because there's not enough media for him to do there. So um, we, look, if you t he, she can go hire Wolfgang Puck to go and, and, and make food at her restaurant, but if it's a McDonald's, he's gonna start making Big Macs. So I, I think you need a specialty agency to have the culture of specialization to get the kind of breakthrough ideas that you want. All righty, <laughs> voting begins now. This would be good. And the, no, the winner is Scott Hess. Yay! <laughs>